Right now, I want to bring in a question from our audience. Hey, Styles, this is Justin Hennig, with, also with Bridge Realty and with Lyndhurst Holdings. We're a buy and hold company in South Minneapolis, working on building a portfolio and also uh, redeveloping some property. I have a question related to RUBS or Ratio Utility Billing Systems, I believe it, it stands for. Um, I've seen other uh, landlords implement that to reduce their expenses and increase their profits overall by defraying the cost of water, sewer, garbage, and I've even seen it used for uh, gas. Um, typically, electrical is always separate. So anyways, we'd love to uh, hear what you got to say about that and uh, how we can improve our businesses. Thanks, Styles. We appreciate what you're doing. Okay, so you had an experience with the rubs uh, mm -hmm. idea? Yeah, yeah, we're working on that now. Uh, the first thing that we prioritize in all of our projects is always going to be those unit upgrades to get the increased rent. Uh, but a RUBS program is also kind of low-hanging fruit, usually because there's little to no capital expenditure required, and uh, it's an instant boost to your NOI as long as you don't um, uh, scare off your tenants by you know throwing up, uh, by increasing your rents and then simultaneously adding a whole other bill to the equation. So we usually try to leg into these things and prioritize the, the unit upgrades first. Um, but we're using uh, Guardian, uh, as our rubs provider and they've got a few different ways of implementing that depending on the number of units you have um, if you've got larger properties 150 200 units um, it might be more advantageous to uh, install hardware on site that actually measures uh, each unit's actual use of uh, of water if you're going that route um, in my conversations with them it's uh, it seems to be much more uh, it seems to make much more economic sense to use uh, the RUB system, which is ratio utility billing, where they don't necessarily install hardware, but they use a formula to back into what each unit's portion of the, the water bill will be. And they can either do square footage or a uh, number of occupants. Um, seems like it's uh, six one way, half a dozen the other, um, depending on how many units you have. And if you have all the square footage data, that might be the... Uh, the deal breaker there, if you don't have that data, that might rule that one out. But in any case, they'll use uh, that data um, and they will uh, retroactively bill the tenants for previous usage. So you would scan in your bills um, that you received for the month of November, for example. Uh, they'd get that. They'd send out the bills to the tenants and they give you the option of either the tenants paying you or the tenants paying Guardian and then Guardian uh, sends the money over to you via uh, direct deposit. Um, and the cost of that's fairly low. I want to say it's about seven bucks per unit if they do the billing and the collections, and about four or five if uh, the tenant pays pays you. Um, and I think the way that most people do it is they have that uh, billing fee or whatever you want to call it uh, factored into the bill that goes to the tenant. So it could be you know zero cost to you. Uh, the only thing you'd want to consider is uh, whether or not your market's going to bear it. If there's other properties that are doing it. Um, and if uh, it's going to increase your vacancy, you know, is it worth it to get an extra 30, 40 bucks a month if someone gets that bill and gets turned off and, and leaves? So you want to make sure it makes sense. You want to make sure that um, the market will bear it and that you're not going to be throwing too many expenses at your, at your tenants at one time. Yeah. Um, do we have to use a third party company like Guardian or is this something you can do in house? You could do it in house. Um, there's nothing. Uh, to my knowledge, there's nothing legally that prevents you from doing that in-house, uh, but there is a pretty big administrative demand to doing that. Um, you know, they're going to create the bills for you, mail them out with pre-addressed uh, return envelopes for the payments, and they, they do that entirely. And if you're able to, you know, uh, pass that cost on, or at least some of it to the tenant, that's usually, uh, usually better because I don't know if... For most investors, I don't think the highest and best use of their time is sitting there creating invoices and mailing them out and you know waiting for the payments to come back and all that good stuff. So I don't think the uh, the ROI on your time is there if it costs you a couple bucks to have somebody else do it uh, versus you spending hours doing it every month. Um, I think that would be probably wouldn't be the best use of your time, but you could. I don't think there's anything stopping you. You just have to have sure. an addendum in your lease and um, you know have your lawyer write it up uh, based on. Uh, where you're located, and you know, just be transparent about the the method you're using, whether it's the number of occupants or the square footage. And if you get that addendum in there and they sign it, then you know you can basically um, do the billing however you want. 
uh, from what I understand. But uh, for me, it was kind of a no-brainer to outsource for the, the low capital cost uh, of using Guardian. And um, they have a 12-year agreement that they want you to sign, uh, but there's no upstart, uh, there's no upfront charge to start. Um, they just want you to stick around for a year if you do it. So 12 month or 12 year? Oh, I'm sorry, 12 month. Okay, 12 I was years. like, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of commitment. Yeah, 12 months, I'm sorry. Okay. So, I mean, you know, there's there's not a, a big uh, downside risk to doing it with a lot of these types of services. You're going to find that there's this big upfront charge if you want to start using some sort of platform and then a monthly deal. With this, it's, you know, you can pass the costs on for the most part, and uh, there's no real you know, reoccurring cost or anything that you need to worry about. Yeah. So you just want to be smart with uh, the types of... Uh, uh, increases that you're you're passing on to your tenants and you know pick the ones that are going to be providing the most value to the tenant first because that's going to be the most likely that, that people are actually going to be willing to pay up for if people are going to want to pay for newer things they're probably going to be less excited to get a water bill but on the uh, uh, on the other side of the coin they're also probably going to be more um, cautious with their water usage too so yeah kind of kind of helps everybody that's definitely one of the benefits there mm -hmm. um have you found, or what's your opinion, is the marketplace uh, willing to pay for their water? Yeah, I think water is a pretty safe one. Uh, I haven't experimented with, uh, I forgot what else you mentioned, gas, um, electric. I mean, theoretically, you could do trash. I mean, you could bill back for all the utilities uh, and all the uh, uh, all those things if you want. Um, but I think that that's kind of pushing it, um, just because I haven't really seen many other communities do all of those things. It's usually water. Um, but yeah, I've, I've lived at an apartment, uh, that did this and I wasn't even really aware of it at the time. This was back, uh, four or five years ago when I first moved in with my wife, when we were still, uh, just dating and it was always a little confused as to why the rent, uh, it was all an online system and the rent would always change a little bit each month. I never really understood why. And then, you know, years later I've gotten into all this now and, and, uh, look back and I'm like, oh, okay, they were doing you're doing a rub system. You know, the water usage is a little different each month. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think there might be a lot of people that, that uh, depending on how you bill it, might not even really be aware that it's there. So if you're using, you know, Appfolio or uh, one of those types of things where it's just a line item on uh, on the bill that they go online and pay every month, they might not even really notice that it's there. So Yeah. Well, that almost points out something that we need to increase communication about it because part of the idea is that it would reduce usage, mm -hmm. and that's only going to happen if they realize they're paying for it. Yeah, yeah, with me, I didn't. Um, you know, they had really good systems out of place. Everything was online, and and uh, it was really easy to just go on, click pay, and you didn't really look at the breakdown of anything. You know, I was younger, so I didn't really pay all that much attention. But, um, but yeah, if, you, if your goal is to actually reduce the water usage, you do want to make sure that everyone knows that you know, they've got some skin in the game. Want to hear more on this topic? Click the link below for the full episode of Maximizing Your Property Value.